Hi everyone, you are watching The Culture Cave here from a beautiful beach in Okinawa at a secret location. But what I can tell you is that it is one of the most beautiful beaches in the world. <laughs> Absolutely breathtaking, oh my goodness. Um, Last September, first of all, to everyone watching, happy Chinese New Year's. Um, I took a little break from vlogging, even though I've been pretty active on the channel um, with music and traveling and things like that. I took a little break from my uh, vlogs, so to speak. But um, as many of you know um, who watch the channel, in September of last year, I decided, well, actually, let's go to the very beginning. Um, in 2022, I was on the island of Miyakajima and I met some avid scuba divers while I was spending some time on the south part of the island. And long story short, they got me into the crazy idea of becoming um, a scuba diver, which was something that I'd never even contemplated. Um, but I've gotten into snorkeling more and more avidly over the years, um, especially um, being based in Japan. So just spending lots and lots of time um, on the ocean and literally falling in love with ocean life. Um, it has definitely changed um, the essence of how I communicate with Mother Nature, I would say. so. That was the start of the, the, the seed was planted and I decided um, that within 12 months I would become a scuba diver, a qualified scuba diver. Um, so I went on a really big search um, to find the right scuba diving instructor. They say it's really important to choose, um, to choose an instructor that's the right fit for you. And after about six phone calls, I got chatting to somebody who was absolutely fascinating. Um, a, a British instructor based here on Okinawa um, who has been diving around the world. On his very first scuba dive he discovered the uh, supporting ship of the Mary Rose battleship off the coast of the Isle of Wight and we had a very long discussion um, about life, about diving and many other topics. Um, so I decided to um, do my license with this particular um, scuba diving instructor. So my journey with that instructor officially began, um, we met in June of last year and then I booked to go diving in the September of last year. So just a few short months ago, like four months ago. And um, I came back to Okinawa, I did my first uh, pool training at first and then I did my very first um, ocean dive having um, learned all of the basic skills to survive in the water. Um, for anyone who is new to diving I thought this um, these stories and anecdotes would be interesting also from a philosophical perspective. Um, I'm a very spiritual person as well so this journey with the ocean and my relationship with the ocean, I think everybody has a very kind of unique journey when they set out to do something like this. So I thought it would be interesting um, to kind of share my encounters. So anyways, in September, I did my first ocean dive um, uh, not far from the American village in Okinawa, a place called Tsunabe. That's where we first did what they call a shore entry. So we went down the steps and I, I did my very first ocean dive. It was a very smooth entry. The ocean was very, very calm, which is ideal for a beginner, of course. And one of my first experiences, which I documented in, in the first part of the um, Diving Diaries vlog in, in September, you can find it on this channel, was my experience with a velveteen sea urchin, which you could scoop up in your hand and swim with and it would literally it's not dangerous at all um despite you know the myths surrounding sea urchins they're not all dangerous and it was literally tickling the palm of my hand so i swam along with it and that was my first encounter uh, what's really cool about diving when you speak to other divers or you know just people in general the relationship with the ocean everybody seems to have kind of different experiences you know everybody has an experience that draws them into the adventure and kind of gets them hooked as well. So for me, you know, that was the first thing and seeing starfish and things like this, um, just, you know, you never know what you're going to encounter. 
so um, anyways, I took a break from doing the vlog mainly because I was so busy living and um, as many of the divers probably know as well, once you start diving, um, you're into the next dive and the next dive kind of thing. Um, so my second dive, um, I basically took some exams. I started my exams in mid-September of last year. And then we had a little break because of timing and things like that. And I um, continued my training rather than rushing through it. I continued my training um, at the end of September. So I had another day and for this particular um, one to do more of my exams I wanted to do it in one of the best places um, location wise which is the Karama Islands so I started doing my first boat dives which is a very different experience to the shore dive entries um, and even though it's a few months ago and you know some of the the details um, the, the the finer details are somewhat uh, a little hazier in my memory because of the break I've taken. Um, I truly believe, as I as I um, record this unscripted, as all of my broadcasts are, I think it will jog my memory, and um, I would like to share some of the things that I prominently remember from those dives back in September. So the second dive, um, we were in a location off of the coast of. Um, I believe it was Zamami and these these different location points um, were very very important because I was on the boat with a team of um, a small team of Japanese people mainly a lot of experienced divers so for them they'd literally done hundreds of dives I was learning to do my first giant stride entry which at first is very very scary but when you've done it you realize that it's as long as you inflate your BCD it's very very smooth um, from then on but you know all of these kind of new um, new experiences um, so I just wanted to check the location actually um, to share that accurately let me see here yes dive number two was in Chibishi and then Nozaki um, And uh, I remember that dive number three was off of the coast of um, Tokashiki Island, which is where I'd just been um, snorkeling and there were reef sharks and things like that a few days prior. So for me, the Tokashiki experience was still very, very magical for me. And to actually uh, be dropped off there in the, in the boat was phenomenal. Phenomenal. There was a lightning storm as well. Um, so that was really quite something out on the boat. It was a very rough um, ocean ride. I remember that as well. But one of the first things that I saw, and this would have been on dive number three, was a, um, well, let me, let me backtrack actually. So on the second dive, I remember the, um, the soft coral, which is, this is one of the only areas in the world that has this rubbery, soft rubbery red coral. And it's, uh, it's very cushiony, it's, it's a very magical experience. And of course, coral, Coral is a living, a living creature. Um, so I remember experiencing that. I remember the, the reef and I remember the depth of the ocean and I remember equalizing because my first uh, equalizing experience of the ears on the seawall was somewhat tricky and we anticipated that it might be an issue for me, the sinus thing, but after a couple of weeks break from diving and coming back to it at the end of September, something magical happened in my body. Um, my body seemed to have adjusted itself. So I, I knew also to stop a little more frequently to equalize as you would in an airplane or something like that. But with diving, you're kind of in control of, you know, the level when you're descending and ascending. So it's very much about just tuning in with yourself, tuning in with, you, with your ears. So I remember that that experience and being pleasantly surprised as to how my ears um, were equalizing a lot more easily um, so I was delighted about that and uh, I believe I went down to about 12 meters um, and then on dive number three something truly truly magical happened um, I had had sharks on my mind ever since the reef encounters off the coast of Tokashiki and 
when we went into this ocean on the third dive, um, I had, at that point, uh, we descended with my GoPro camera because up until, before then we didn't want to um, do camera work, we were just focusing on the skills side of things. But by dive three, Richard, my dive master instructor, said we could start to take the camera down. And we had a very, very blessed experience. Um, when we descended, um, Richard started doing the, the shark sign to me and pointing and it, the visibility was very, very bad that day actually. Um, yeah, visibility I think was only about 11 or 12 meters, which, which isn't that far. Um, but it was a little misty because it'd been like a typhoon um, a few days prior. So I was looking everywhere for a shark. Um, I wasn't afraid because A, um, sharks are common around here, like the smaller reef sharks especially. B, Richard was very, very calm and I trust him. So um, I didn't think there was any reason to be alarmed. And, and C, I was just super excited to be in the direct vicinity of a shark for the first time during my diving exams <laughs> it was just insane it was really really wild um so um eventually i realized why i couldn't even doing a 360 i couldn't I, I, like i couldn't see the shark anywhere and then i realized why the shark was on the seabed way down below and it was sleeping so it was actually just niched 